Okay, I think it's already 1.30 um, in Melbourne time now. So according to the pro program, we shall start. Um, let me just share my screen first. Can you see my <coughs> my uh, my slide in full screen? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> All right. So, uh, good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the e workshop on supply chain resilient capability building. Uh, Jolly is organized by RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia as well as the uh, uh, Busan National University, uh, Republic of Korea. Um, hello, everyone. A very warm welcome uh, and greeting to you. My name is uh, Vin Thai, and I'm currently an academic from the School of Accounting, Information System and Supply Chain of uh, RMIT uh, University in Melbourne, Australia. And for those of you from overseas, uh, RMIT stands for the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology University. Now, on behalf of the organizing committee of the e-workshop uh, on supply chain resilient capability building, which is organized by RMIT University of Australia and Busan National University in the Republic of Korea, would, we would like to warmly welcome all the distinguished speakers, industry participants and academics, research students and other participants from both Australia, uh, Korea, as well as from other countries. Now, in the past two years, um, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused widespread impact and significant disruption to global supply chain. The unprecedented effects and the resultant restriction rules imposed in many countries have revealed acute bottlenecks in supply chain links in many trade regions, including Australia and Korea. Now, the resulting disruption are not only on domestic trade, uh, but also export, import, and cross-border trade. Now, these disruption push supply chain resilient to a test and therefore require a platform for industry and academic collaboration. Now, view on the success of the inaugural symposium in May 2021, the RMIT PNU staff student exchange webinars in November 2021, and the recently held Australia-Korea conference on supply chain resilience in December 2021. This electronic workshop is also part of the activities of a project supported by the Australia Korea Foundation of the Australian Government's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, or DFAT, which aim to develop and sustain a joint supply chain resilient research capability platform, leveraging on the existing collaborative relationship between RMIT University in Australia and Busan National University as well as the Korean Association of Shipping and Logistics in South Korea, or Republic of Korea. By determining supply chain uh, resilience issue into countries and undertaking industry-focused research, jointly through the activities of this uh, project, the relationship between Australian and Korean academic institution and business entity can be strengthened, and this can create meaningful dialogue and collaboration between academia and industry contributing to enhancing trade relationship between Australia and Korea and beyond. Now, we are very thankful for the generous support from the Australia Korea Foundation of the Australian Government's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, as well as from the School of Accounting, Information System and Supply Chain uh, under the College of Business and Law of um, IT University in Australia, together with the Pusan National University in South Korea. Without their support, this e-workshop will not be a reality. Um, while the workshop had to be held online this time, we do hope that um, this is just another step for the continual gathering of academics and industry professionals from both countries in the future event to continue the collaboration and sustain supply chain supporting the trade relationship between Australia and Korea. We thank you very much for your support and please enjoy the workshop. Now, uh, <clears throat> what I would like to do next is the official Acknowledgement of country to those of you in Australia. This is now a standard practice whenever we uh, organize an, any event. So on this note, RMIT University acknowledges the people of the Woigurong and Boongurong language group of the Eastern Kulin nations on whose unceded land we conduct the business of RMIT University. RMIT respectfully acknowledges their ancestors and elders, past, present and emerging. And while we, we conduct our work remotely, 
I want to pay my respect to the wider unceded lands of these nations. Thank you. Um, in this um, uh, electronic workshop today, we have three uh, distinguished uh, industry speaker, uh, academic and industry speaker. Um, and I would like now to uh, introduce my colleague, Associate Professor Charles Loud from uh, he who is the acting head of the De Department of Supply Chain and Logistics uh, in the School of um, uh, Accounting Information System and Supply Chain of RMIT University, who will be moderating um, the e-workshop today. So, uh, Associate Professor Chao Lao, when you are ready, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Win, and uh, a warm welcome to everyone uh, to the e-workshop. Now, it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you our three distinguished speakers today. They are all uh, authorities of experts in their own area with uh, many remarkable achievements. So I'm going to introduce them one by one. Um, the details of their profiles are given in the uh, the uh, proceedings. Um, uh, so I will just uh, give an overview of the achievements. Now, the first one I would like to introduce is Professor <coughs> Mohammed Quadis. Um, uh, Professor Quadis is um, now with the School of Management and Marketing in Curtin University at Perth of Australia. Now, uh, Professor Quadis is a multidisciplinary researcher. His interest covers many areas such as um, uh, supply chain management risk and supply chain behavioral modeling and so on. So he's also a very prolific um, uh, academic. He published over 300 papers in journals, uh, conference, and also uh, books. Uh, he's also a very, very so-called um, uh, 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 good um, teachers. Uh, he supervised more than 50 doctoral students, which is really a big number. Uh, as we, uh, as academics, we know how much effort we have to put in to churn out 55 uh, doctoral students. And he also <coughs> have received quite a lot of awards. Um, uh, for two years, he has been named the Research of the Year in Curtin University, and he also took up quite a lot of um, significant position in the university as deputy dean and the dean of research. Um, he also acts as a consultant of um, many famous organizations, including um, uh, DFA, WA, uh, Woodside Petroleum, and World Bank. So um, welcome to today's function, Professor Quadis. We are looking forward to your presentation, which is to give us a comprehensive overview of what supply chain resilience is with an illustrated example. The second uh, this distinguished speaker that I want to introduce to you is Dr. James Kim from uh, Korea. Um, Dr. Kim is the head of um, the sales and solution department of UPS in Korea. He's been with the company for many years, starting in 2006. Um, so he has quite a lot of experience in this field, and he's basically um, um, took up many positions in the company and, and now is the head of the department. So he started off with um, uh, uh, business in, uh, with his professional international um, trade, but then move on to the logistic field. So now he's also um, a so-called an academic as well. I mean, um, uh, so he has experience in both the industry and academia. Today he's going to um, give us an overview of how the industry is changing uh, in response to COVID-19 and also he will give us an example of uh, logistic solutions, particularly in the vaccination area. Now um, the last speaker, last but not least, um, uh, is Dr. Amir um, Kusami. Um, I Personally, I know Amir for a long time because he was with us uh, uh, at RMIT and later on he moved to the industry and he's a very experienced practitioner. He um, worked in the um, Aurora uh, Beverage Cans Australia, a very big company indeed, and now the director of supply chain. Um, he has undertaken many big projects in procurement and supply chain solutions and he's very uh, so-called experienced in 
uh, so-called fast-moving commercial goods um, operations. So today he's going to share with us um, uh, his opinion and also will from a holistic perspective how the industry can recover and develop resilience in the long run, right? Okay, so um, next we are going to invite the three speakers to share with us the experience. And then after that, uh, I, I, I wish the audience to hold the questions. And after that, we have a um, long Q&A session together because the three uh, speakers are uh, trying to discuss the same topic from different perspectives. So it is our, our will that it would be good to have the questions um, all together instead of um, uh, individually uh, as specific to a presentation. So please hold on your questions and you can type in your question in the chat box and we will take note of that and then convey to the speakers later on. So without further ado, may I invite a Professor Quadis to share his experience with us first. Over to you, Professor Quadis. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you can all hear me and see me at the same time. Okay, uh, let me try to share my uh, screen. Uh, just give me a sec. Um, okay, can somebody guide me? How do I do it? Uh, Professor Kudas, if you can see the arrow on the top, um, yeah. if your slides are open, share content, and then you can open through Windows. Right now we can see the screen uh, where you are sharing the portfolio. Or do you want us to open from my end? Yeah, I think you can do that. I made slight changes there, but that's okay. Just, just open from your end and I'll uh, I'll just talk from there. Sure. Okay, now um Okay, it has disappeared from my end. Okay, can you, can you stop yours and let me try one my again? I can't see. Sure. No, it's not coming. It's not coming. OK, anyway, just just start yours. Uh, I'll, I'll talk on that. Sure, Professor. OK, good. Uh, can you uh, go to uh, display? mode so that we can see the bigger picture. Sure, Professor. OK, OK, I think that will do. That will do. OK, now, uh, well, good morning from Perth. Uh, as you know that I'm in uh, uh, at Curtin University School of Management and Marketing in, in Perth. And um, as I was introduced, uh, you know, I have been working at Curtin for a long time and I work in a multidisciplinary area and supply chain and supply chain resilience is one of my area of interest. So what I'll do, I, I kind of, uh, you know, title my talk as management of supply chain resilience 
because I thought that if you want to manage something, you need to know the ins and outs of uh, supply chain resilience. So we will go over the whole thing, you know, what supply chain is and uh, what are the things that need to know. And I'll, I'll give you a basic definition of that. And then every domain of supply chain that you have to uh, uh, understand to really manage supply chain resilience in a better way. OK, next slide, please. OK, so agenda for my talk is I'll just highlight very briefly the why we need to study resilience. OK, well, in general, resilience is really to overcome disruptions. So I'll give you some examples of that. And uh, these are well known in the literature um, and I have dealt with that. And I think many of my colleagues, uh, you know, here in Australia and also overseas have dealt with the same thing. After going through that, I'll move into the, the definition. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm zooming into definition because uh, when you talk about supply chain resilience, it depends on what kind of supply chain you're dealing with. OK, if you are in a. Well, the screen from my side disappeared. Can I see the screen again? Sure, Professor. Some, uh, for some reason, someone is trying to share the screen all the time, so we are we are disconnecting uh, connected. Could you please uh, uh, stop sharing the screen? I'm not sure who is stop sharing the screen, but uh, just give me a moment, Professor. So the attendees, if you are not presenting, can you please switch off your camera? Uh, especially Tang Vina Marin, who is a guest. Your video is on. Thank you. OK, so. All good. Can I continue again? Yes, please go ahead, Professor. OK, OK, sure. Yeah, uh, as I was saying, the reason that I'll zoom into supply chain resilience, uh, because the definition of resilience will depend on what kind of supply chain you're dealing with. So if you are in a processing industry, uh, you deal with machines and processes all the time, then of course a disruption will be related to that. If you are on other side of the supply chain dealing with mostly distribution, oil housing and so on, then your resilience and your definition of resilience will be quite different. So that's why I'll zoom into that and then I'll move into different contexts of supply chain resilience. In fact, all the things that we need to know about supply chain. So that will probably, uh, you know, will be the bulk of my talk. Then I'll introduce a study that I have been doing uh, recently. I got some results of that. I introduced that last time last year, but I'll also talk about uh, what I call real supply chain. Uh, and some results I got and this is very interesting. It shows the power of supply chain and uh, why you should be you know, so careful about supply chain. OK, so if you uh, uh, next slide, please. OK, just some comment on, you know, how do you describe yourself uh, as resilient? We talked about, uh, you know, that there are a lot of things a lot of definition of resilience. There are, you know, individual resilience capabilities or qualities. There are team resilience, there are organizational resilience, and so on. We also hear about resilient customers, uh, resilient tourists, and so on. So resilient, how you describe yourself as a resilient, okay? So, you know, you can see the picture here, uh, the resilient trees, you know, is really surviving the harsh climate of, uh, of resilience. OK, next slide. OK, I like this, uh, you know, kind of quote from Charles Darwin that it is not the strongest or most intelligent that survive. It is the most adaptable to change. So all of us should have the quality and by all, I mean, individual team, organization, supply chain and so on. Everybody should have the quality to adapt to new changes uh, and really, uh, you know, embrace the new challenges in a better way so that you can survive and do uh, even better. OK, uh, next one. Now, 
I'm just highlighting here a couple of examples of impact of disruptions. OK, and this example is really everywhere in the literature, but I think it's uh, it's uh, to repeat it again is, is better because this shows the impact of uh, a disruption and the impact of supply chain. So we all know about the earthquake which happened in Japan in 2011. Uh, you know, there was tsunami and building collapsed and everything, and there was tremendous impact of uh, in the rest of the world because everybody is connected nowadays via supply chain. But in the same place in 1869 AD, uh, there was earthquake again. OK, but the rest of the world felt nothing because supply chain uh, was not a big issue then. In fact, there was no supply chain. Everything was fed uh, locally by horses and cars and so on. So you can see that how supply chain can play a role in really propagating uh, the disruption, the problem that you have in your uh, supplies it goes from really upstream to downstream and everywhere in your supply chain. Now, next slide. OK, now this one I call managing disruptions. So this is an example where, as a real example, where there was a fire in supplies plant and Ericsson I know one of the companies, uh, their strategy was not very good, so they, they had a late response kind of strategy and that resulted in $400 million. But in the same supplier's fire, uh, Nokia had a quick response strategy. OK, so they really overcome the problem very quickly and really you know, did very well. So if you think about it, response to your supplier, to your disruptions is really one of the strategy of uh, supply chain resilience. And in this example, it is highlighted that uh, both companies, Ericsson and Nokia, are dealing with reactive resilience strategies. Is that the best way to do it? Well, yes and no. I mean, you, you must have reactive strategy, but you also should have what I will introduce later, the proactive strategy, so that you know, you can sense, you can monitor that some problems might come up and you prepare yourself to, uh, for the problem, and then you can, you know, absorb the shocks and problems uh, quite uh, effectively. Okay, next slide. Okay, now that brings me to, you know, definition of resilience. Okay, to me and to my many colleagues around the world, resilience is really a multidisciplinary concept, and in short. It is really response to a disruptive event. So whenever there is an event, uh, disruptions, you know, uh, creating some problems in your uh, distribution, in your supply, in your manufacturing, and so on, you've got to have some resilience strategy to respond to that. Holling was one of the you know scholars uh, who first came up with this concept of resilience, and to him, the simple resilient definition was. It is the ability of a system to absorb changes. OK. Well, Holling mostly worked in uh, uh, by ecosystem area and so on. So that definition at that time and in that particular domain, I think was OK. But nowadays we're dealing with interconnected world. We're dealing with you know many issues and so on. So we got to do uh, better than definitions. It's not only uh, absorbing the changes, we have to move the organization to a better state and do really a better. OK, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> uh, next slide, slide is not moving. Slide on my screen is not moving. Can you move to the next slide? Okay, 
Well, it hasn't moved in my screen. Uh, I can't see it. Really? Let me unshare and share again, just in case. Sorry, sorry for that. It's just... I mean, I shared my screen before. I'm not sure why it's not happening today. I mean, it, my slide is open. Yes, yes. Administrative more definitions. I was in this slide before. Can anyone uh, confirm me that if you can see this slide? Slide number eight. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, now. Uh, Talking about definitions, I reviewed some uh, uh, I reviewed some papers, and uh, you know the the most comprehensive study was done by Vamra in 2018, and he dealt with 15 definitions of resilience. Of course, you know including supply chain resilience. So it really varied from individual to organization, and from physical system to socio ecological systems. So all kinds of definition he he dealt with. And major keywords that I picked up from his study was speed. Speed is a, one of the key, uh, you know, issue of resilient definition. Ability to absorb change. We know that magnitude of disruptions. You know how big or small is a disruption. Like you know the way you approach in you know, a COVID uh, will be quite different uh, if simply you're dealing with machine downtime. Well. The screen had disappeared again. Uh, I'm sorry, but it's really giving some problem. OK, let's come back again. Yeah. Yeah. So magnitude definition, uh, the capacity to maintain the functionality, continuous reconstruction, then the ability to sense, adapt, and absorb variations. So these are some of the keywords, common keywords, that came up with that uh, particular study, uh, which I picked up uh, from that study. Okay, can you go to the next slide, please? Number nine. The slide, Professor, can you see that? No, no, I can't see in my end. Aswini, uh, is Lynn here? Let, let me jump in. Let me share a screen from my side, okay? Sure, Please sure, stop sure. sharing. Yep. Sorry, uh, Mohamed, just give me one second. Sure. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yeah, I can see. So can you go to the next one, number nine? So just give me a second. Let me just uh, mute. Just a gentle reminder, if you're not presenting, please switch off your video to maintain bandwidth. Thank you. Yeah, number nine. OK, so with that uh, particular study that I looked into, we uh, came up with some definition of resilience. So in the simplest form, it's the ability of the supply chain to absorb the impact of disruptions and return to its original state as soon as possible. So there are a few things you see here the to to absorb the impact of disruptions and go, get back to the original state. I then looked into some study which deals with, deals with primarily definition of supplies and resilience. So Rivero and Barbosa Pavoa in 2018, they reviewed 26 definition of screen. So you can see you know how the the whole area of supply chain resilience is really, uh, evolving because there, there are many ways that you can define and you can uh, you can deal with it. So in that study, I picked up four significant pillars of SCREE. I call it SCREE, uh, my simple uh, term, supply chain resilience. So in the next slide, slide number 10, if you go number 10 now, it shows four uh, you know aspects of supply chain resilience. The number one is adaptability. So a resilient supply chain must have the ability to adapt. 
speed. So get back to normal or even do better as soon as possible. So time is a significant uh, aspect. Performance level, you know, when you deal with resilience and so on, it is resource hungry. You have to mo uh, mobilize a lot of resources. You have to invest some money and so on. So what do you want at the end of that? So there has to be some performance uh, related to the definition of a screen. And the focus event, what is the event or number of events that you're trying to be ready for or you're trying to manage when that event particular happens? So four pillars as identified in that study was adaptability, speed, performance level, and focus event. Okay, uh, slide number 11. Yeah, that's good. It's coming very quickly now. Now, we know from the concept of adaptability, it's the ability of the supply chain to change and recover. Okay, and I'll show in a moment that it's not only really change and recover. In fact, change, recover, and doing better. Okay, and other ideas of adaptability is to withstand the shocks, to rebuild and reestablish, to prepare for unexpected events, to maintain the continuity. So when you go back to normal, you have to make sure that you can maintain it. Now we define, we categorize uh, SCREE in two ways, proactive and reactive. So adaptability really deals with both proactive aspect and reactive aspect of uh, SCREE. Okay, like the fourth dot point to prepare for unexpected events, there is a proactive aspect of adaptability and then to stand shocks, uh, to maintain continuity, to rebuild and so on, they are reactive aspects of adaptability. Okay, next slide, speed, uh, number 12. Okay, speed, well, we all know the team uh, speed. Uh, it's a time needed to halt harmful act. So you have to act very quickly, respond very quickly so that you know, uh, the harm or anything uh, that can happen, you can minimize it. So if you go back to the example of that supplier fire, <coughs> the response by Ericsson and response by Nokia, the speed was the number of factor. Ericsson was very late and Nokia was very fast. So uh, Nokia was able to minimize the uh, harm quite uh, significantly. So other uh, concept is time to recover, quickly revealed, uh, quick and fast response. Then again, the notion of quick is situation specific, you know, depending on what industry you're dealing with and, um, you know, uh, how uh, significant is your, is your product and all kinds of things. Speed is mostly related to reactive aspect of uh, supply chain resilience. Okay, uh, next slide, number 13. OK, as I mentioned before that, uh, you know, supply chain resilience is resource hungry. You have to invest resources, money and so on. So you got to have some performance tied with that. And that performance could be before, during or after the event or after the disruptions. So one of them could be reducing the probability of disruption or disturbances. I really believe that if you do a good job and if you become proactive and so on, you can sense uh, that something is likely to happen. OK, so one of the criteria could be how can you reduce the probability of disruption or disturbances? You can how do you identify, anticipate and prepare for the event? That could be a uh, you know, uh, performance level. Uh, you can minimize the consequence of disturbance. OK, and what do you want to do and how do you want to do it? maintain the control during disturbance, that is the during uh, when something is happening, and time required to get back to normal. So these are all the possible uh, supply chain uh, performance level. And we also come up with in our study uh, in 2017, that reaching a stronger and more sustainable state, okay? That could be a very good outcome or performance of uh, you know, investing in supply chain resilience. So this is definitely one of the you know, significant component of supply chain definition. Uh, next one, uh, slide 14. So focus events, 
So in, in basic concept is that resilience must respond to an event. So you got to know what is an event or what is the you know, likely harmful event that might engulf your entire supply chain. It could be one event and that might propagate along the supply chain, or it could be a number of events from you know, upside to downside of your supply chain. So there are several events. Events could be risk-related, or it could be completely uncertain. So risk-related means that you might have some idea, you can estimate some probability, likelihood of happening that event, and uncertain that it just comes suddenly and engulf your entire supply chain. And we all know the most events have ripple effect. Okay, from supply side, it goes to customer side and so on. And to really counter this event, we strongly believe that SCRI should be built into design stage of supply chain. Okay, so if something happens in your the main supply chain, you know what is the uh, you know uh, alternative plan? How do you really uh, divert your processes and so on so that you can you can minimize the impact? You can you can get back to normal in a timely fashion. OK, next one, uh, slide for 15. OK, with that, we come up with a comprehensive definition of uh, SCREE, and it is based on four pillars, and also based on my earlier work and uh, other colleagues and so on. So it is a well-designed supply chain network with proactive and reactive capabilities which enables the supply chain members to reduce the probability of disruptive events or to reduce their impact to take the organization to a stronger, more sustainable state in an acceptable cost and time. So I have, I have color coded different aspect of the definition. The first of all, to us, CRE is a capability of supply chain and we must deal with both proactive and reactive capability. OK, then we must have some performance, some outcome of the screen, and it is could be to reduce the probability of disaster events or to reduce their impact. Sometime, you know, it happens like you know, COVID-19 happened, so we have been trying to reduce that impact as much as possible. And it's not simply absorbing the uh, you know shock or changes; it is in fact to take the organization or the supply chain to a stronger and more sustainable state. And of course, within acceptable cost and time. So there are different elements in this uh, definition. And uh, so if you look into this, you can see that uh, there are aspects of definition that fits into you know, what you are dealing with now. Maybe you're, you're more into reactive aspect of screen or maybe proactive. You are trying to uh, you know, sense and monitor the events. So dealing with the probabilities of those things and so on. OK, so those are different aspects of uh, SCREE that we have to be really very careful about. So my suggestion would be that no matter what industry you're dealing with, have a look at this definition uh, and see how you can customize it in your case. For example, if an industry is mostly in the distribution or house in that aspect, then of course, the kind of proactive reactive capabilities will be different. The kind of events that you have to manage will be quite different. As opposed to if you work, if you work mostly in processing industry or maybe in some you know, uh, uh, service industry like bank and so on, okay? Uh, you know, a resilient bank, uh, that's a classic example, you know, how bank can absorb their shocks, okay? So that they can survive and do better. So I, I guess this definition is comprehensive enough and it can be customized uh, in your own way. Okay, next slide, 16. So with that, I come to managing SCREE. By managing SCREE, I really want to emphasize all the domains and contexts of SCREE and what are the things that you need to know to manage SCREE better. So all the knowledges, the components of SCREE I'll be highlighting from now on. So we know that SCREE responds to disruptions, so we need to know why and how disruption might occur. Sometimes it could be out of control, could be completely 
uh, from elsewhere, from uh, you know outside the organization. We may not have any control at all, but still we should give it a go to sense that something might happen. Uh, we'll be dealing with risk, vulnerabilities, disruptions. They're all interrelated, but there are some differences. OK, uh, and I'll be highlighting that. So risk is not exactly like vulnerability. And of course, disruption uh, we explained so far. We also need to know what are the drivers of resilience? What do you need to do so that resilience scree improves in your supply chain or in your organization? What are the consequences? OK, and being in academia, you need to know the theories, modeling tools and techniques. You know, what are the theories that you should deal with to really manage scree or deal, uh, deal with scree better? And what are the modeling tools uh, that you should be using to analyze the scree problems and come up with some solutions for that? So these will be the few things that I'll be highlighting from now on. OK, next slide, uh, 17. OK, what I present here is really about eight kind of domains of SCREE, starting from supplies and risk, vulnerabilities, disruptions, scalabilities, drivers of resilience, theories, modeling tools, outcomes, and so on. And to me, uh, this is it. I mean, if you want to master in supplies and resilience, you got to know all of those things you know, really well, and then probably customize it in your specific application, but those things will be there anyway all the time. OK, so let me just quickly go over uh, each of them. Next slide, 18. OK, now let me highlight supplies and risk. Risk by definition is the probability of occurrence of disruptive events. OK, and there are differences between risk and uncertainty. Uh, you know, uncertainty is something which comes uh, you know, out of the blue, we have probably no control. We have no idea about that uh, risk. Uh, you know something about it. Uh, you know some probabilities of uh, happening that. There are a lot of examples uh, in the academia about, you know, many disruptions, many uh, problems and so on. But when you read them, when you analyze them, you can see there are some you know, senses. There are some, uh, you know, uh, uh, trigger, and you could really see that something is happening. So those are mostly risky events than, you know, uncertain events. Supply chain risk management is a very popular field in supply chain, uh, being existing for a long time. Uh, risk could be internal, like supply process and so on, or external, like demand environment. So my suggestion is that you have to know your supply chain risk from the entire supply chain, from upside to upstream to downstream, everything you have to know. And you can develop a comprehensive risk profile of your supply chain. OK, next slide, 19. OK, this is just one example of supply chain risk category, but I think it's kind of you know, semi-comprehensive. Uh, this particular study deals with supply side risk, manufacturing risk, demand side risk, logistic risk, information risk, environmental risk. If you think about these categories of risk and think about the COVID-19 as, uh, as, as a disruption, as a problem that we had uh, still having for the last couple of years, we had risk of everywhere on the supply side, on the manufacturing side, demand side, logistic side, you know, information side, you know, information was not available. Uh, people didn't know what to do, how to do. And of course, the uh, environmental side. So it's in a way kind of uh, uh, applies to every situation. But of course, you have to study your own supply chain and develop really a good uh, risk profile. OK, next slide, 20. OK, now. Um, just moving into supply chain vulnerabilities. There are some differences between risk and vulnerability. By definition, we always say that a risk increases supply chain. As risk increases, supply chain becomes more vulnerable to unforeseen disruptions. OK. And uh, other definitions of that is an exposure to serious uh, disturbance. We define uh, a vulnerability as 
the susceptibility of supply chain to a consequence of disruptive uh, events. So if you work in a uh, you know, supply chain area, you can have a saying that some part of supply chain, maybe upstream or middle stream or downstream, is more vulnerable to some you know, nasty things happening. OK, like in my previous life, uh, my profession, I'm a mechanical engineer. I used to work for a processing industry. And we knew that in the middle stream, there are a few uh, machines that are more vulnerable to downtime. And we had to develop strategy to maintain them well and replace them quickly enough and divert the supply chain so that you know, we can produce in a timely way. So you can have a saying that which part of your supply chain or which aspect of your supply chain is more vulnerable to uh, you know, uncertain events and events. So from RIGS, we come to vulnerabilities and all that. Uh, next slide, number 21. OK, now recently uh, Sharma uh, came up with some quadrants of vulnerability, and I thought that's quite interesting to see. Although we knew it, but they're, you know, kind of put it in a black and white in a more formal way. So they came up with four categories, internal, external, uh, controllable, uncontrollable. And you can see that the most uh, nothing is easy, but the more, more the, the better to manage any vulnerability is quadrant one, which is internal and controllable. Uh, then uh, number two is external and controllable, something outside of organization, but still uh, you can somehow control it by developing strategies. Uh, the more you know, severe one is quadrant four, uh, natural disaster, war. Uh, COVID-19 definitely falls in there. You know, something which came out of the blue, uh, completely external and completely uncontrollable. So you can look into this quadrant. It's an easy one to understand, and it develops a vulnerability map uh, of your supply chain. OK, uh, next slide, number 22. Now, this is a vulnerability map deployed by one of my former students, uh, Dr. Aki part of her PhD dissertation. She worked on LNG supplies in Australia and came up with you know, financial vulnerability, strategic vulnerability, geopolitical, environmental, hazard vulnerability, and operational vulnerability. And see the way that she has gone into, you know, deep inside of each of the domain. OK, so if you want to develop a comprehensive vulnerability map, this is something probably uh, you can do. Uh, uh, next slide, 23. Okay, this is a study that we did uh, way back in uh, 2007 8. The paper came out in 2009. Uh, a study on Brazil automotive and electronic industry and mapping their vulnerability. Okay, and we came up with financial vulnerability, hazard vulnerability, uh, strategic vulnerability, and operational vulnerability. Okay. The inside one, uh, the rectangle, they show that uh, is it internal, controllable, or external, uncontrollable. The, the further you go, uh, it becomes more external and more uncontrollable. So the point that I'm trying to make that it is possible, it is possible to develop a vulnerability map of your uh, supply chain and really zoom into a space where you see uh, things are more vulnerable and some sort of disruptive events might come in here very quickly and you know come up with some resilient strategy to counter those to mitigate those. Right, uh, disruptions uh, 24. Well, I'm sure by now we have some idea uh, you know what a disruption is really unplanned, unanticipated events that disrupt the flow of goods and materials. That is by uh, definition, but you know, I would argue that that some of the disrupt or, or many disruptions could be, of course, unplanned, unanticipated, but some of them you can really uh, get a sense of that and you can really manage that quite well. OK, in general, supply chain disruptions are viewed very negatively by the market. 
So, you know, we all know what happened in stock market and so on due to COVID and some big disruptions, uh, you know, the stock prices, everything really goes down. Uh, if you go back to the literature, there are a lot of disaster examples. Uh, a study by Hendricks and Singel, they analyzed 800 published supply chain disruptions. These are published and they are in the literature. So there, there are many, many of them. So my suggestion is that make a list of possible disruptive events in supply chain of your organization. Okay. Uh, you know, what are the things that you might see maybe happening in the supply chain? And if you can come up with a probability and severity estimates. Okay, so some events could be high probable, but impact could be very low, uh, low severity, but some is, you know, low probable, but impact could be very, very high. I mean, who would know that we'll have COVID-19? So the probability was very, very low, but impact is extremely high. So if you can come up with probability and severity estimates of that, and, uh, you know, in the study, uh, in LNG by my student, former student, uh, Dr. Aki, she definitely did that. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, this is from uh, two authors, Kochan and Noiki, 2018. Uh, they came up with uh, some categories of disruption. I thought they could be useful in your case. And the, the most disaster one is a catastrophic event, micro label. So they are mostly natural, and COVID-19 is an example of that. Uh, the demand side events, uh, volatile customer demand, panic buying, you know, we have seen that in uh, you know, COVID-19 is, is happening now, is happening now again. Uh, supply side events, uh, supply failure, uh, sourcing constraints, uh, logistic transportation events, uh, network disruption, transport worker isolation, that's a uh, that's a contributor example, you know, but we all know that in Australia, the supermarkets are again going Again's empty. Busy. That's primarily because of transport workers isolation and having not enough workers in transport industry. Other disruptions could be production, infrastructural. So these are different ways that you can uh, get a sense of disruptions in your supply chain. So this is a study done by Kochan Noiki and uh, given a supply chain uh, that you are dealing with, you can definitely come up with a sense of what kind of disruptive events. Uh, background noise. Okay, so you can really come up with this, uh, you know, list of disruptive events. Okay, next one. Okay, supply chain capability. This is one of the most important slide because we promote that SCRI or supply chain resilience is the fundamental capability of any supply chain. So we got to develop the capability of resilience in your supply chain. Okay. And those capabilities are really become the measurement dimension of SCRI. I mean, we have paper, you know, how do you measure SCRI? Okay, there are different ways of doing it, and the literature there are some confusion between, uh, between measurements and drivers and so on. So we highlighted that in one of our papers. So be mindful that SCRI is a capability. You want to develop a capability to make your supply chain more resilient, and there are many ways of doing that. And I've summarized some of the studies that we have done and also the literature that we uh, in 2016, dealt with seven fundamental capabilities of SCRI. Then 2020, Han et al. came up with eight capabilities. We also grouped capabilities in terms of readiness, response, and recovery. In 2017, we grouped capabilities under proactive and reactive. And if you really uh, think about that, uh, the readiness is really proactive, and response and recovery is reactive. Okay. So there are many ways. These are high level ways of that you can develop the capabilities, but uh, you can do, you can really go deep into that. So if you go to next slide, slide 27. Okay, uh, this two authors, 
they uh, you know they use the high level category like readiness responsiveness and recovery and came up with different elements under them what are readiness uh, readiness to them efficiency dispersion uh, market position collaboration and so on and uh, responsiveness is agility uh, redundancy uh, recovery is adaptability crisis management and that sort of thing so we can really from high level categories of capabilities scree capability you can drill down and go into more finer part of uh, uh, resilience capabilities uh, next slide number 28 Okay, this is from one of our paper, and we dealt with 12 high level capabilities. So you can see the scree is our fundamental uh, you know, construct that we want to measure, and we come up with proactive, reactive, and supply chain uh, uh, design. So if you count all the outside part of it, there are 12 high level capabilities. And if you see our paper, we really, came up with 49 items under that. So I have color coded all the definitions like RDD is a disaster readiness, uh, FLX, a flexibility, and so on. So this gives you a kind of capabilities or measurements or how, like how do you measure screen? Uh, a very comprehensive study and uh, you can use it or customize it in your own way. Uh, for your own particular uh, the screen management. OK, uh, next one. OK, now we come to drivers of screen. As I highlighted before, there are differences between drivers and measurements. Measurements are within screen. You know, what is screen itself? So these are capabilities. And drivers are also known as antecedents of screen. You know, what makes Scree improve? What do you have to do? What sort of strategy you might have to fine tune or implement so that Scree improves? All those proactive, reactive capabilities, they improve, okay? So you got to understand the difference between drivers and measurements. I'm highlighting that because in the literature, there are some confusion about that. There are, you know, mix of measurements and drivers, but in our study, in our papers, we try to separate them, highlight them uh, so that we know and the, the readers would know, you know what are drivers and what are measurement. Like in a study 2016, we came up with four high level drivers of screen. Like one of them is supply chain orientation, supply chain risk management culture, learning and development, support factors. So these are the things that you need to have to improve your screen, to improve your supply chain resilience, to improve your proactive and reactive elements of uh, supply chain resilience. Okay, so you must have supply chain orientation. You got to know your supply chain quite well. You must have risk management culture. Okay, built in within the people who are dealing with supply chain and management of that. Okay, you have to continuously learn and develop your ideas to do something good about screen. OK, so those are drivers. Uh, in a recent study, if Tracker et al. dealt with three high level drivers of farm resilience. Mind you, they dealt with farm resilience, not supply chain resilience. So they came up with organizational capability, supply chain flexibility, and supply chain integration. It's interesting to see that their, their uh, consultation was uh, dealing with farm res resilience, but supply chain flexibility and supply chain integration came up with two of the most important drivers of farm resilience. So, you know, sometimes it's difficult to, you know, move away from supply chain being part of the organization. It is really part of the organization anyway. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so still on the driver. So, uh, another study by Duby, uh, they dealt with connectivity, information sharing, trust cooperation other study dates with supply chain re-engineering collaboration agility risk awareness okay and uh, uh, young in 2021 very recent study dealt with only supply chain risk management capability as a drivers of 
uh, screen. So no matter what you do, you got to come up with two things. One is the measurements of supply chain resilience. How do you measure uh, resilience? And also, what do you have to do to drive those resilience capabilities uh, in a better shape, in a better form? OK, uh, next slide. Now we come to theories of screen. I know that our industry colleagues could be uh, less interested in that, but we being in academia, this is really extremely important for that because it guides our conceptual development. It guides our data collection, our data analysis. So everything is driven by theory. We use DCV, dynamic capability view, most of the time. Uh, it really uh, highlights that your capability, uh, whatever you deal with, is dynamic in nature. They keep on changing. Uh, so we have to be uh, mindful of that. Other theory that we've used is relational view, social capital, information processing, normal accident theory. Okay, not used every time, but it really says that uh, that accident is bound to happen. Okay, no matter what you do, it will happen. You can only minimize it. Uh, you can probably improve uh, the probability of not happening. It can probably improve uh, the the impact of it, less impact, but it will happen. So we use that. Uh, next slide. Okay, so here uh, you know. We see that these two authors, Kochan and Noiki, kind of list out all kinds of theories uh, which have been used in screen domain. Dynamic capability, resource-based view, uh, relational view, gray theory, uh, you know, graph theory, and you name it. Complicity theory, uh, we're doing some work uh, recently who are really dealing with complicity theory and so on. So if you are in academia, uh, my question would be that which theory or theories are most appropriate in your case? And uh, you know, to my industry colleagues, I would also uh, request that think about it, you know, because it will help you to uh, to think in a better way, uh, to develop your concept in a better way. So theory is really important. Uh, next slide. Now, modeling tools. OK, we need data for data. We need modeling tools for data analysis. We collect data and you got to use some modeling tools for the analysis. And I really believe that, you know, one has to be well versed in modeling tools. Uh, uh, you know, theories and modeling tools, they go hand in hand. Some theories, they really uh, you know, only you can only use a handful of uh, modeling tools for the theories. Uh, you can use some easy ones like you know multiple regression uh, and over. Or moving on, you can use ACM structural regression modeling, which we have used in almost all of our applications. So there are uh, there are many optimization uh, tools that can be used. Also, uh, we have used that, and many of our colleagues have used that. And uh, if you see the paper by Kochan and Noiki, they reviewed 33 modeling uh, tools and approaches for screen analysis. So it all depends on the problem that you're dealing with. If you want to really, uh, you know, minimizing something, minimize the impact, uh, you know, optimizing something, then probably optimization tool is the way to go. Or if you want to see the impact of some uh, strategy on your uh, scree outcomes, scree consequences, then probably some high level statistical tools would be useful. Okay, so depending on your study objective, uh, you know, you can use one tool as opposed to another one. Okay, next one. We come to outcome, uh, which is really the last domain of, uh, you know, scree. As I uh, kept on mentioning that every scree analysis must be related to an outcome. OK, in academia, it ensures our predictive validity that we're doing some scree, we're developing some, you know, uh, uh, strategy for, to enhance scree and so on. 
but how it will improve the performance, how it will improve something. So in academia, we need that quite a bit. And we use supply chain performance uh, in a loose way in many, many studies in our, our study. But other outcome that can be used and I have seen in the literature is uh, reducing the vulnerability by developing some screen capability. Uh, if you are proactive, then ability to monitor supply chain disruptions, that could be uh, uh, another outcome. So outcome could be really before, which is proactive, during, or after the event, which is really reactive. I mean, one of the outcome would be uh, probably time. You know, uh, you know how quickly you can uh, get back to normal. Okay, next slide. So again, uh, these are some outcomes that have been used in the literature: improved performance, uh, excessive risk eroded uh, profitability, sustained competitive uh, advantage. OK, so my suggestion would be that think about the outcomes in your particular case, uh, depending on uh, what kind of industry you are in. Uh, distribution or housing will have different kinds of outcome. Uh, processing industry or, uh, you know, non-manufacturing industry will have different sort of outcome. And if you have, I've seen some applications where they dealt with more than one outcome, then you have to deal with uh, multi criteria models. And there are modeling tools uh, which can be used uh, uh, in multi criteria domain. OK, next slide. Now, what I have done so far, I have given a kind of rundown of uh, the screen domain. You know, uh, look into my one of the slides, the eight bubbles that I have, you really have to zoom into each of the bubble and master yourself to understand SCREE better and to manage them uh, better. What I, I'll do and I'll finish in the next five minutes or so is a study that I've highlighted last year and have some results and will, will show you the so-called power of resilience, why resilience uh, is so powerful. I know Shefi from MIT has come up with a book on power of resilience, and uh, we have done a study in um, uh, in food supply chain uh, in the retail industry, and uh, we have shown that resilience uh, indeed do have uh, enormous power on compared to agility and leanness. So this really goes from a recent uh, paper by Ivanov, uh, where he showed ten research directions, and one of them was uh, dealing with agility and uh, resilience. So we came up with a acronym, we call it REAL. The REAL means we combine resilience, combine agility, and combine leanness. So we pick up the letters, we call it REAL supply chain, and we apply that in a food retail industry. Uh, next slide. So that is our model, a uh, very basic model that lean, of course there are other uh, things in there. I'm just presenting the high level, uh, you know, uh, variables here. So leanness impact, uh, uh, food supplies and performance, uh, resilience impact, also same thing, agility and uh, communication. We collected data, we use structural equation modeling, but we'll be doing further analysis by using a tool called uh, fuzzy set qualitative comparative analysis, FSQCA. Uh, next slide. OK, so in this study, we use a mixed method study. Uh, the communication as the variable was not there initially, but by doing some qualitative study, interviewing some people in the domain, we found that uh, the communication is important uh, in a variable. So we had to include that in the model. And as I said, our result established the so-called power of resilience. Uh, next slide. OK, what? We did we we did the analysis in a stepwise way. We wanted to show the impact of agility and resilience. If you see on the left hand side of the diagram, where agility is the only antecedent of uh, this is retail performance. RD part is retail performance. Agility then highly significant is good. It's really uh, 
positive, significant way, uh, you know, impacts editorial performance. Now, on the right hand side, we bring in resilience and see what happens. When you bring in resilience, the agility impact diminishes uh, completely. And resilience becomes the dominant one. So all those things from agility to resilience is extremely significant and also from resilience to uh, retail performance. So our conclusion here is that resilience suppresses the role of agility uh, when you compare these two. Uh, next slide. We now compare leanness and resilience and the same story on the left hand side. We see leanness alone impacting retail performance and you can see that is highly significant. The moment of being in resilience, that significance disappears. So resilience takes over and that becomes more significant and all that. So again, our conclusion here is resilience suppresses the role of uh, leanness. Uh, next slide. OK, we now show the comprehensive uh, model running everything together and you can see that the agility uh, that resilience affects retail performance significantly, which is this one here and leanness and agility. They do not, you know, they just fall short of uh, becoming significant agility and uh, uh, leanness. But we also did indirect uh, in a comparison and we found that agility affects retail performance indirectly by resilience, so through this path. And leanness affects retail performance indirectly via agility and resilience. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to show here that how and how resilience is so important in this particular study. Uh, it's an empirical study and we have really uh, been able to show the power of resilience. Okay, next slide. So I'm now coming to uh, my end of my talk. So think about how resilient is your organization, how resilient is your team, and how resilient are you as an individual? There are a lot of uh, you know studies on individual resilience, team resilience, and organizational resilience. Supply chain, of course, become part of organization. So think about those things. Uh, next slide, the last one. So in conclusion, I will quote something from Sheffy that for a business to survive, growth is imperative, not an option. But growth brings increased uncertainties as a result of unreliable global supply chains. So if you want to grow, uh, you know, you'll get into some disruptive events, some risky event, uncertainties and so on. And there are a lot of evidence, <coughs> our own study and my academic colleague study that increased resilience brings increased organizational performance. So ensuring resilience is also imperative, not an option. So be mindful about resilience, be mindful about supposed resilience, all the deviations, all the domain that I covered here, uh, followed by a, you know, some quick result to show the power of resilience. So to me, you know, uh, everyone has to be mindful of their supply chain and come up with strategy and capabilities to improve their resilience. So with that, I finish my talk. Sorry for all the, you know, the hiccup that we have, but I think we managed to finish it reasonably within the time. Uh, thank you, thank so, you much, so much, uh, Professor. Uh, professor. Uh, uh, Credits for a very comprehensive um, presentation. So I think you touches on every aspect of uh, supply chain resilience, and you provide a very very comprehensive background for practitioners and uh, researchers to think about the topic and how to deal with it in their own situation. So um, according to the uh, timetable, we should now take a break of 50 minutes, and then we'll. Um, uh, invite the other two speakers to share their opinions. So um, should we come back at, say, uh, 3 o'clock, uh, Win? Charles, there is a question. Uh, there's a question, but we said we hold the question until the end of all the presentation uh, instead. But uh, it's up to you. If it's only one question and it can be quickly answered, 
uh, professor can choose to respond. Now, the uh, on the chat, the question is um, on the topic of real. Can you describe the slack resources trade off between agile and lean and the balance in resilience? It's a relatively technical question. Yeah, it is a technical question. Uh, uh, frankly, we haven't we haven't done that, but it is definitely uh, uh, a good question. The slack resources and how do you really uh, manage that uh, uh, for uh, you know uh, to improve your software resilience and so on? So we'll, we'll look into that. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. So, um, as there are no other questions, Mohammed, your previous students just want to appreciate your presentations. Um, it's a great presentation indeed, I, I must agree. Okay, so in that case, um, should we take 15 minutes break and come back at 3 o'clock? Is that uh, uh, okay? 10 break, uh, a 10 minutes break. Okay, so in that case, we come back um, at um, 2.55. 56 or 55. OK, so we continue from there. Okay, so then. everyone yep. just go to grab a coffee or a piece of cake and then we'll come back again. OK, thanks. See you later.